to the Clone War review tonight. We're going to look at an episode called Rookies. The best confidence builder is experience. This episode was written by Stephen Melching and directed by Justin Ridge. We follow a small installation on the Outer Rim planet of Rishi and a band of newbie clone troopers as they try to stave off boredom. But when the Separatists send commando droids to take over the installation, will it threaten the Republic's ability to stave off the surprise attack on the clone homeworld of Kamino? Luke, will you walk us through this episode? Sure. So we start out at Rishi Station, which has maybe eight clone troopers total that are guarding it. And we're led to believe it's basically an empty, boring planet. The only other thing that seems to be on there are these giant cave eels that jump from hole to hole in the surface. Those are awesome, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) They're interesting. (laughs) That's for sure. And our troops are very bored there and talking about how nothing happens. There is one thing I really liked, how they had um, an army radio station. That they were listening to, dedicating songs to the troops. I thought that was a nice little touch that kind of grounded it a little bit. And we we meet our clone troopers. None of them have any experience except for the sergeant who is there. And while they are there basically doing nothing, a meteor shower strikes. And as everyone in the Star Wars universe should know by now, there is never an actual meteor strike that happens. No, those never happen. No. So it is actually a clone... Ship, or clone ships, droid ships that land down there with a new type of droid we've never seen before. The Commando droid, which is a really cool design. It's basically like a more humanoid version of the typical battle droid. I love these guys. They don't make any jokes. They are serious. They are deadly. They are fantastic. Oh, I love these Commando they're, troops. They're black. Commando. They're stealth-like. They, they're sneaking around. They seem to have a plan and some intelligence. Uh, so they sneak on to the base And the basic plan that they want to accomplish is this is the last outpost before Kamino, where the clones are being grown or made or harvested or however you want to describe it. And their plan is is to knock out this station so that it can't report to the Republic that General Grievous's attack ships are going to go have an assault on Kamino. So they're trying to sneak into the base in order to take it over. So that General Grievous can fly by. So they 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 sneak in. They pretend to be a clone trooper at, at certain points because they can put the helmets on and fake the voices. And they assault this group of troopers. And they kill the sergeant. And they kill all the troopers except for four of the most inexperienced who sneak out through a vent and then drop down into the planet's surface where one is immediately eaten by an eel. Yes, by that eel, yes! <laughs> he just it's jumps harsh. out of the cave swallows him whole right there and they kind of shoot at him ineffectively meanwhile the droids take over the base they are able to disable the call alarm so that the republic doesn't know what's going on and this base is basically sending an all clear signal on repeat so that the republic thinks that everything is fine meanwhile grievous's ships are getting closer and closer to camino we also see in a what might be shades of things to come that ventress is a spy on camino because she talks via hologram to grievous and is identified as their spy there. So I don't know how she could possibly hide in plain sight among right, that's, anyone. That, that represents really bad planning by Yoda. Because Yoda clearly knows about her in the first one. And I realize that these are out of order. But if that's the case, like, that's just terrible. Well, I mean, and they they fought Ventress in the movie mm-hmm. as well. And at, when these episodes were created, Tartakovsky was canon. His Clone Wars stories. And she was the main antagonist of the first season of that. So they all know who she is. So how she can sneak onto a planet with her bald head and her weird blue face paint and and whatnot and and not be noticed is a little surprising. But we'll we'll see where that goes. If it gets mentioned again, I'll be curious or if it's just something they they toss aside. But while this is also going on, Rex and Commander Cody, who are basically the two clone commanders that we're familiar with, land on the base to do an inspection. They land at the loading dock and the clones dre- or the droids dress up as clones and try to dismiss them, but they figure it out and the other clones down on the surface fire a, a flare to warn them. So a gunfight breaks out again. Shoots him right in the head. Yeah, Rex Merciless. shoots a battle droid right in the yes. head. Yes! And, and I think he talks shit to it too yeah. while he, he does it. There's a lot of shit talking <laughs> there is. from the, the clones in this one. 
But um, they throw the droids throw detonators. They have to jump off into the planet surface where they meet up with the other now three clones because one got eaten by an eel. Um, it's a bad day. It is a bad day, and uh, they they talk to these clones about how it's time to gain experience, and they use the blood of a dead eel to decorate their army armor so they're not shinies anymore, which means they have shiny unused armor. Um, and then they realize that they need to retake this base. They sneak back onto the base. They fight the droids. They take the base back over. But Grievous has realized up in his ship what's going on. So he sends down another battalion of droids to attack them. And they realize that the only way they're going to warn the Republic that Grievous is coming is if they blow up the whole base so that the beacon saying everything is fine will be destroyed. They have a plan with a remote detonator. But of course that doesn't work. So one of the clones has to stay behind and blows himself up as well as blowing up the droids and the beacon. The ultimate sacrifice. Exactly. They have some touching moments on the CB as they try to talk him out of it. And then the Republic knows what's going on. They fly over and chase Grievous away. Kamino is saved. And the two remaining uh, clone troopers kind of get medals and accepted into the, the greater the greater team. So that that's what happened in this one. What jumped out at you Man, besides eels? This episode is dark as hell. The colors, I absolutely love the way it was directed. I don't know anything about Justin Rich. I didn't know about him before I looked it up for this episode. But this is my most favorite directed piece of Clone Wars yet. Um, I just thought he does great stuff with colors. And it's just there's the way that it's lit, quote unquote, is perfect. Uh, there's a perfect amount of blaster fire, which has been a big deal for me. And there's a perfect use of tension. This is like a horror movie. It's like a half of a, a war movie and a horror movie put together. And I just loved it. People die here. This has like ultimate stakes. And like I said, it reminds me of a horror movie. The way that it sets up with these quiet moments. And then boom, something happens. And I just absolutely love that. The second thing I want to talk about is it made me care about the clones who literally look the same. We have had this theme since the beginning where they're trying to get you to care about clones. They're trying, you know, they have different, they talk different, they have different hair, they'll have different characteristics. Here, they all have the same haircut. So they're like, it's like the end process. It's pulling this to the, the end result. And do you care about these dudes who all look the same, who all talk the same? And you really do. Like at the end, you really care about those two who made it, but you care about the ones that didn't. Well, and one thing that I think they did a really good job in there is, as you said, they all have the same haircut and their armor's all the same. But as the battles progress and, and they get into encounters, their armors get dirty in different ways. The One of them, I think it's, um, I think it's Fives, gets the, the handprint on him that Rex gives him in the eel blood. So as the they're progressing and you're getting more and more worried about them, they become more individualized in their appearance, which they True. don't start out as. And I thought that was kind of a fun way to kind of bring us in. Oh, they're all one character and then really split them up both who they are but also visually who they are yeah, it, was a, it was great it, it was a great amount of touch the way that this was directed and the way that this was written by melching and or i should say by ridge and melching uh one thing i want to talk to you about is the climax like you can see the climax coming when when the the, the one club trooper is it he heavy heavy yeah uh you can totally see it coming but it didn't take away from how awesome it was i mean this is a kid's show and we're seeing clone troopers die left and right and one is kind of like i'm gonna do what i gotta do to, to make this happen and even though i it was telegraphed i felt like i thought it was great well and but what wasn't telegraphed to me especially with kind of the tonal shifts we've had in the show in general being whether it wants to be jokey and funny or whether it wants to be more dark and serious like this one is it isn't just heavy doing a detonator and blowing up everything he gets shot a yep. ridiculous amount of time and is crawling on the floor as they continue to shoot him. At one point, you know, they tease that he's dead, even though you know he's not going to be. But he has a real long, painful death in order to do this detonator, which I I personally liked and was a little surprised by based on how jokey the, right. re the earlier episodes have there been. There aren't a lot of jokes in here. The ones that they have are very tame. This is a very serious episode. Even the regular battle droids aren't as jokey as they right. normally are. They the have favorite one... part about these commandos. Right? Oh, you mean well, no, but, you're, you're later the on regular they send ones the regular ones, ones in, and they don't really make a ton of jokes. They make one or two. I think right before uh, Heavy blows them up, one of them kind of looks down and says, oh, do we take prisoners? And then Heavy says, I don't, and blows them up. Right. So they, they had their moments, but it wasn't constant like we're used to where every time you see them, it's something stupid coming out of their mouths. You talked about the radio programming, and the other thing that I really liked in that sort of, hey, we're bored military guys, is there's pinups in the background. <laughs> I don't know if you saw those. Uh, so it just, it just made the feeling of, of kind of like, 
you know those those tropes of military movies that that we've seen so uh where do you rate this on the ones that we've seen so far so i i loved this episode this is everything i wanted they beat the uh, uh the droid army without the droid army seeming weak as a whole uh they just beat a little section of it and they kind of had to do it last gasp and drastically uh i like the darker tone that's more entertaining to me as an adult i liked not having the jedi just come in and save everything with their jedi powers and they even call that out a couple times. Rex and Cody in their banter. Mm-hmm. Wish there was a Jedi here. Yeah, well, and then there's one there where they say, well, this was just like this other planet we've been on. And the other one says, yeah, but we had Jedi there doing it for us type thing. So this was them doing it on their own. Uh, I, I loved all the callbacks to the military things like you just mentioned. This is leaps and bounds number one for yeah, me. Yeah, me too. Me too. I absolutely love this episode. It reminded me a lot, for those of you who watched Voltron, uh, the American version, when Sven died. Okay. I was going to say, there, you know. The original. The original. Yeah. Multi-trucks assembling in space or lions? Right. Uh, no, the lions. When Sven dies, when I saw that, when I was, uh, what was I, a second grader at the time, I was like, holy crap. Like, life got real for me. And I, and I pictured myself watching this, sort of remembering that on, like, it was, it was like, you know, like, you've talked about... In the past, your love of the Transformers movie and how, like, hardcore it was. Like, this is that for me in the Star Wars universe. Just seeing this. I, I just loved it. It's my number one. What's funny about that is I, there might have been a call-out to the Transformers movie in there. I, I don't know it. if it was intentional. But in the radio broadcast, they say something about... And I, I tried to look at it on the subtitles. But they say something about a planet called Miniba. And the universal greeting in Transformers in the movie is Ba-weep, Grana-weep, Niniba. So I'm really, it probably wasn't, but I'm really hoping that was a call out to the Transformers, the movie from the 80s, not a Michael Bay piece of shit. Like the actual cartoon one with Leonard Nimoy and Orson Welles and and all those, Eric Idle and all those people where they kill half the Transformers and rebooted the universe. So I'm hoping that's what that was. 